Uh, these are some of the great companies that are joining us today. Really appreciate you guys uh, being part of today's session. All right. Chris, you want to say a couple words about online business systems first? Yeah, you bet. Thank you. It's, it's so good to be here today. Um, and nice to see some familiar names in the guest list. And Donna, it sounds like you have a very awesome career and employer there. Very exciting. It's been a long time since I've been on a ride. Um, the company I work with uh, and for is Online Business Systems. Um, we're a North American a consultancy uh, that's been around since 1986. And so we've been doing digital transformations for a long time. Uh, when it comes to the services that we offer, um, we focus on digital transformation, which is all about defining where you are today, your digital destination that you want to achieve in the future uh, through technology, and then the journey between those two points today and where you want to be in the future. As part of that, we have uh, digital advisory services. We develop employee and customer experience platforms through our digital studio, which Kevin Sigmundson uh, comes from, who's joining us today, as well as Adele. Um, we have our Salesforce practice, service management, customer engagement, and then we have a great team of business analysts, change management professionals. Now, when we talk about digital transformation, what's super important about nowadays and what differentiates us in the market is that we have cybersecurity. So it's not just about digitizing, it's about digitizing and enabling through technology, but in a secure way. So secure digital transformation is very important to us. It's baked into the DNA of our organization. On the people side, as you can see from some of the uh, metrics on the bottom here, um, I get to work every day with very bright entrepreneurial minds who care very deeply about our clients. And for our clients, that means they get to sleep at night. And for us, that means we get to build really strong and enduring relationships with our clients. And so not only do we provide great services, we have an absolutely stellar team uh, that seeks to make sure our clients are taken care of and that they're successfully navigating their digital transformation journey. And so it'll be very exciting to get into the topic of work, uh, di the digital workplace today and the relationship to customer experience. But we'll talk more about that later and I'll hand it back to you, Tony. Thank you so much, Chris. Man, you did not even say, uh, mm, and you're like, awesome. I'm going to take a breath now. <laughs> <laughs> Great job, by the way. All right. So um, some our presenter, we're going to start with a quick keynote from Diane Majors. Uh, Diane was a senior director from Cisco Foods, and she's been a uh, the board, me board member and the former president of the Customer Experience uh, a Professional Association across the world. I mean, she was the president of that. Um, and then we're going to go into a panel discussion with Monica McKay, Adele, and also Kevin uh, being moderated by Christopher. So I'm going to stop sharing. Diane, um, go ahead and take it away. Thank you. Absolutely. Perfect. All right. Let me get to this All right. Everybody can see what we're looking at today. Yes, all right. We're talking about connecting the customer and employee experience. And I have the pleasure of introducing this concept and what you're going to hear is an overview. Now, there's a lot of information in here, but know you're going to get all the slides. So listen, but don't try to read everything on the slides. I want to give you lots of value. It's just setting the stage, though, for the panel who is going to share with you the how behind a lot of these concepts. So let's dive in. What I want you to think a little bit about is um, essentially when you think about your own experiences, you can see here we've got some pretty frustrated folks who are calling the care center, looking at their app, tearing up their bill, looking at a product they just got. What I want you to think about when we talk about connecting the customer and employee is that behind each of these experiences, there is an employee who is um, empowered, enabled, they're either designing that experience or they're not, they either have the right technology or they're not or they're on their phone doing something other than working you know whatever those things are this is where we think about the employee and the decisions they make every day how they do their work and how it does impact the experience so you can probably think of a lot of examples in your own mind about where you ran into issues with a an employee or something you were using knowing there's an employee behind it and we know that these two things are linked because we as consumers are very picky about how we interact with a brand and we are more likely to leave because of poor employee attitudes. You've probably been on a call center call or walked into a store or restaurant um, and had that happen. 
Um, also, we're more loyal when we do have good employee, um, hear good employees and attitudes. And our brand perception is determined by our experiences with the people. So products and services are one thing, but as they become more and more commoditized, it's really the experience that makes a difference. And that's typically directly with an employee or because an employee has designed something you're interacting with like an app. So that's the connection between the two. And what I wanna talk a little bit about today is how do you use experience management lens as a part of how you look at this? So as you listen to the panel talk, I want you to think about in your organization, Who's caring for the entire experience of everybody in that ecosystem? How are you taking everything that's happening from the employee, the customer, partner, and supplier, and applying experience management practices to that? So you think about customer experience, that's a profession, obviously, but employee experience is coming along just the same way. I want you to think about if you were to take all the disciplines of customer experience and apply it to your employees as customers of the brand as well, how different your program for engaging employees would be. Because what we find is as we think about the experience that people have, it's really about this entire engagement ecosystem, I call it how all these things interact, how as employees design and make decisions about what the experience is gonna be like, how that impacts the customer and how that circles back to the brand results. So that's the full circle we're gonna talk about today. That requires us to think more holistically about this engagement ecosystem, not just about the customer experience, but internally the employee experience, the workflows, the processes, the technology that they and the customers use in order to bring the brand to its full potential. We as employees expect and want engagement and different connection at work. This has changed over time. So the one thing everybody says is none of this is static anymore. Things are changing rapidly. And it goes the same for what we all desire, not only from our own employment at an organization, but with our clients, with our experiences with brands. So you can see here the engagement and this personal experience and how they feel valued and the purpose. We all know that we are finding that millennials really want to be a part of of um, a purposeful, sustainable organization. Well, that used to apply to millennials, but right now it's about everyone. So the values are changing. So then how do we respond to that? I want you to think about um, two things. Engagement, we hear employee experience and employee engagement. So let's just set the stage a little bit for employee experience is the sum of all the perceptions the employee has with how they work in the organization. It's all of those experiences from hiring to how they do their work, to getting reviews, to getting coaching. And engagement, employee engagement is a workplace approach that's really the result of how the experience goes, whether they're engaged or not. So you can read a lot of research about engagement and the measures of that, but that's all driven by the experiences they're having. So it's an outcome of that experience. So just give you a little baseline for what it is. What I'm gonna talk about just briefly here is what I call beyond the bagels. So we've always been talking about employee experience as you know, all these perks that we give to employees. Yes, they need health insurance. Yes, the bagels and coffee. Um, yes, free lunches. Yes, a great work environment. But what else? If you think about what we just talked about with wanting to be valued and heard and understood and contributory, that is really what I call beyond the bagels, getting to the real meat of the opportunities that we have. So we have this new approach that beckons and you're going to hear these awesome panelists talk about how all these things come to life. But I want to set the stage for you that the way we've always done things, the way we've approached our annual surveys and how we sometimes respond to them and sometimes not, how we measure the outcome of that other than retention, what are the other measures we need to have and how we monitor the outcome of our employee experience. What we're finding is organizations are engaging in this transformation of more design thinking applied to it and tracking the orchestration of the activities that come out of listening to employees real time, all the time, um, integrating that feedback with the customer so they get this holistic view both internally and externally of what for both in impact to the organization as well as to the customer and employee experience. So there's this shift that's happening. 
And that shift is a perspective of we've always thought about this customer experience and we've been full on with trying to get information and data and real time listening and real time, you know, close the loop and all the things you hear about. But what about our employees? Why is it no, it should be no different for the employee than it is for the customer? Because everybody really is after this approach of ease, being effective and being emotionally engaged. So why would we treat them any separately? They're both um, part of the ecosystem that needs to exist. So these experiences then are interdependent. So you think about the customer, the employee, and the systems and processes that um, provide the expertise and the background uh, for, for how they get their work done. So if we think about that a little bit, we really need to start to think about the employee experience, just like we do their journey, just like we do the customers, because as they go through that journey and they become more expert at their job and they have the right tools and resources, what we think about is how they do their work, how they get performed and evaluated, how we help manage their career, how engaged they are with providing feedback. So we see now that a lot of organizations are starting to put this employee experience journey together so they can understand those moments of truth and the pain points and where people are struggling. But we're also seeing them start to connect this employee and customer journey. You know, where does the employee experience impact the customer? If you've ever been on a call center where somebody has uh, a long wait time, typically it's because when they're trying to answer a question, they've got 15 applications open. And that's not a good way to have an employee experience that provides good experience to the customer. So we start to ask these questions about connecting those two journeys. You know, what makes it difficult and where are we using technology and digital to enable that experience, for example. We can also start to look at the value that's created from employee experience improvement. So when you do um, mapping, journey mapping for an employee, you're looking for how engaged they are, what are they doing? Are we you know, acquiring the right talent? Are we retaining them? Are they productive? Um, and then the financial impact behind that. So if we're always hiring and always training, there's a lot of cost that goes into that versus the retention piece, but that retention is based on the experience that our employees have. So now we're starting to connect those journeys, but we're also connecting return on experience um, to the business results. And so when we start to merge these two things together, we find that organizations that do this as well begin to see the satisfaction scores go up, they reduce cost to serve, um, and they boost employee engagement, which means less uh, turnover, more retention, more productivity. So we're seeing organizations now who are beginning to take this ecosystem and applying the same rigor and structure to their employee and customer experience in the same way. So you can see that return on experience, I call it rather than return on investment, which it really is, starts with that employee experience. Many organizations are starting with that and then merging that in this, in this gear shape to the customer experience and taking both of those measures and metrics to really define in the cost of serve and acquisition and all the other financial measures that we typically have. So those two things, those two components come together to create a much more powerful and additive business result um, as a result of the experiences they're creating. So what is this purposeful intent to shift? So I talked a little bit about um, experience design. So you should be designing your employee experience just like you are your customers. They need to be thinking about changes in the ways of working, we call this. So more collaborative, more agile, more innovative. That requires people to change the way they work, um, what they do, how they do it, how they collaborate, lots of things in the organization. So think of this almost like organizational change. This always on conversation and involvement. So this real time listening and real time monitoring of how the experience is going. No more of this annual review and annual employee engagement survey. It's all the time, real time objectives, actions for each employee as well as the organization. And then new skills and capabilities and empowerment. We're finding that many employees are saying, you know, if I'm gonna survive in this new environment and I wanna really grow as a, an individual, then I want the organization to really help me look at the skills I need and help me develop those. And we're finally seeing this bigger um, bent of co-creation or participatory design is what we call it too. Fancy term for employees and customers are actively involved in creating their experiences together. Um, so bringing employees and customers together to really think about how they're gonna create that future world. 
So to create an experience, um, don't think about what you want to get from employees. Think about what you want to give them so they can achieve their goals because that will help the organization to achieve theirs. We see this focus on you know, outcomes both for them and the business, these meaningful, memorable experiences for them as they work. It's called signature experiences. And then delivering it in a way that builds this emotional bond with employees to really drive advocacy for your brand um, and bring that talent pool um, to better acquisition. You can think of organizations that do this well, like Southwest. Um, anytime you see an employee for Southwest, they are very purposeful about how they create that warm, friendly family environment. And that shows in their business results. So they're a great beacon of how to take employee and customer experience and merge them together in a very purposeful and intentional way. You're gonna be share, Angela's gonna share with you this experience maturity model for employee engagement. So I want you to just use this as kind of a benchmark for how things are gonna happen. And this will be um, with the PowerPoint presentation she's gonna to send to you, um, as well as a, a blog that we've created for you, kind of a, a little white paper with some very specific uh, to-dos on it. And the panel is gonna talk a lot more about those to-dos. So be the catalyst, um, listen up to this panel. This panel's got some, a wealth of experience to share with you. And if I can be of any help, I'll stay on board and answer questions and uh, have fun with the panel. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Diane. So much information <laughs> in such a short amount of time. All right, so uh, Chris, go ahead. Excellent, yeah, thanks, Diane. By the, by the way, I will say, um, I hope you're not suggesting getting rid of bagels because <laughs> Anything with carbs is good in my books, <laughs> but I appreciate it. No, I'm not saying no, don't do away. Don't do away with the bagels. Just go beyond the bagels. Okay. Yeah. Upgrade to pizza, people. <laughs> Upgrade to pizza. Come on. Bagels are so nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so we're going to start the panel side. And so what we're going to do is, so again, thank you very much, Diane, for taking the time to join us today. Very, very informative. And I think when we get into the panel discussion, we'll see some of those themes come into what we're gonna be discussing as well. But before we get to the good stuff, let's talk about the even better stuff, which is who's on the panel and who's gonna be talking. Uh, so I'll just quickly introduce myself. Uh, I'm Chris Harper. Uh, I am Canadian in case you can't tell by my accent and you're from the South. Uh, and I might apologize from time to time for that. It's just part of how we are. Uh, but I oversee our digital advisory services, which is more of our management consulting function at online. Funny enough, although we're talking about uh, workplace experience and digitization, my background is human resources and labor relations. And so um, having worked the front lines with employees on a day-to-day -day basis, I certainly uh, can see and understand the impacts uh, of, of, of digital workplace and digital experience for employees and their relationship to consumers and our customers. So I'll hand it over to Monica, Adele, and Kevin to introduce themselves, and then we'll roll into the panel. Perfect. Hi, everybody. I'm Monica McKay. I'm a partner and engagement lead at Disrupt Idea Company, so I'm not with the online team. However, both of our businesses work together frequently on solutions that are very robust in protecting both brand and technology priorities for clients. Um, a little bit about Disrupt. We are a newer business. Um, we're really a hybrid of a traditional agency and then a business consultancy, uh, but we really love the the ability of purposeful creative ideas to make organizations grow and thrive. So we use customer experience to evaluate those opportunities to remove friction, add value and strengthen emotional connections to help our, our clients organizations grow and thrive. Thanks very much, Monica. Adele, we'll go with you next and then we'll wrap up with Kevin. Awesome. Hi, guys. My name is Adele Rewartz. I'm a senior UX architect here at Online. So I have a background in innovation, product, and user experience. And I use that to help businesses create really human-centered approaches to their digital transformations. Uh, so I'm a lot more on the what and the how side of this conversation. Thanks, Adele. I'll go next. So I'm Kevin Sigmundson. I'm the senior director of Online's Digital Studio. Um, I've been uh, developing software, leading uh, software development for online for a number of years. Um, in the last five or so, I've been the privilege, had the privilege of working with uh, the new unit we created, Digital Studio, which is focused on creating digital experiences. So moving away from the notion of, of you know, software and functions to really creating experiences for um, 
our clients' customers, but also for our, our clients' employees. And you know, the it it was a very strong alignment between uh, online's culture and and being sort of a human centric organization ourselves. And uh, we brought that empathy into even when we we're building, say, enterprise software in the two thousands. Um, we uh, brought that uh, that sort of uh, inherent quality of an onliner uh, into the software development sphere uh, through Digital Studio and, and uh, the, sort of the team members that you're seeing on the panel today. So I'm, I'm honored to, to sit on the panel and, and participate in this. And thank you to tech execs for having us. And like Tony said, I'm going to be making sure that you all behave yourselves during our panel discussion. Um, what I just want to remind everybody is if you have questions, uh, please put them into the chat box. Tony and the crew are going to be collecting those and will let me know when they come in so that we can obviously put them on the floor uh, to be answered. If we don't happen to get to your question, uh, Tony is going to talk about at the end and, and ask the expert uh, opportunity. So if there are additional questions that you have and we can't fit it in, in the next 25 minutes, um, please feel free to use that method of connecting with us and we'd be more than happy uh, to provide some additional information uh, than time would allow us uh, today. So we're going to get right into the panel discussion. Um, what Diane mentioned, she had those two circles, the Venn diagram that talked about customer experience and employee experience, and that's where we're going to begin our, our discussion. So just around the relationship of employee experience and how it elevates the importance of customer experience um, in the organization. Diane had a slide where I could see the employee journey and the customer journey. And so Monica, I thought we'd just start with some of your thoughts around the relationship between those two things and how investing in the employee experience can create a return on investment and a return on engagement or experience uh, from the customer perspective. Definitely, yeah. So Diane did such an excellent job teeing up um, that framework for creating a really great um, employee experience. So what we tend to see, especially in the brand and positioning side is often so businesses, businesses are so focused on those external audiences, your current customers, your prospective customers, that it's just easy to downplay or sometimes forget about your employee experience. Um, and that's a problem because a strong employee experience can have these amazing benefits, not just for retention and great culture, but they can become, your employees can become your best brand advocates who really contribute to that message resonance and the message frequency that customers need to hear to even be aware about your business or to start developing a preference for your business. So when you can align those two experiences together and give equal credence to them, um, organizations can start to unlock some more ways to deliver on the brand purpose, which certainly achieves customer growth, but also keeps employees really happy. Um, it also creates this wonderful culture of problem solving versus problem having. Um, when you have the right collaboration tools in place and when management too really reinforces it as a priority. Great, thanks, Monica. Kevin or Adele, you wanna make a few comments on this one? Yeah, sure, I'll, I'll jump in, uh, Chris. Um, we're talking about elevating the importance of customer experience. I think um, it starts with the basics. It's elevating the importance of it through training and tools and, and even things like uh, our uh, speaker was talking about today around sort of act, active co-creation or putting our employees in the walking in the footsteps of our customers uh, using design thinking exercises um, can really uh, turn the tables and start thinking as Monica was saying about uh, instead of sort of problem having but how do we solve problems for our customers if that's our mission if it's our service as an organization to solve customer problems let's address that instead of focusing on our internal internal processes and, and I think that the key thing there is um, our employees are sort of the last line of defense in customer experience. They close the gaps when our, when our products or our process flows or things that, that don't anticipate the, uh, the edge case or the, the one-off case where a customer is sort of in a crisis or in a moment of truth, or we have the chance to really nail it with them and, and, and create a win. They're the ones who are with that training, with those tools uh, and having sort of become part of that customer experience culture will who will make that a memorable moment for the right reasons. Great, Adele, did you have a few comments you want to make? Sure. 
I really love the idea of connecting uh, the employee experience to the customer experience. And I think one of the things that's really important for us to remember is that all of the employees impact the customer experience in some way. So even, you know, your most back-end database developer is, is out there, you know, making your systems run faster and smoother. And it's really important uh, for all of us, including that employee, to see that impact that they have on the end result. Perfect. Now, this, the next area we want to talk about is just the expectations employees have. I mean, you know, like employees will go into the world, into the jungle there, and they're going to experience a lot of different technologies and capabilities. And then sometimes they bring those things back into the organization and think, why isn't my employer doing this? So let's, let's talk about, and Kevin, we'll start with you. Let's yeah. talk about the uh, employee expectations, how they're changing. And maybe as well, we'll touch on what happens when those expectations aren't aligned with what the company is promoting in the marketplace. Thanks, Chris. I, the, uh, I'm a little. I'm, I'm going to use a bit of a story. About uh, five years ago, I was doing a tour, a speaking tour, and talking about uh, user experience mostly, and talking about the the importance of taking a user centered approach. And when I I emphasized the uh, digital uh, revolution as a as a uh, explanation of why we needed to focus on user needs, because in a digital world, when we're talking about customers. The, our customers don't have to use our digital platforms. And the line that I'm a little embarrassed about is that I'd say they're not like our employees who have to use the software we write for them or else, you know, we can, you know, give them hack or, or they won't advance or, you know, they'll walk them out the door or something. Um, and what's really shifted in the last number of years is our employees are acting and, and, and wanting more of a consumer style approach to the tools that we give them. You know, the, the stories that we hear from customers as a as a driver for why they change, uh, why they work on their systems, isn't that they're not necessarily meeting sort of the functional requirements, but it's the ability to handle a customer need and to do it in a way that sort of is more like the consumer apps. If you think something like a digital uh, uh, mobile app that they might have that we use for supporting a customer, these apps often live on the same devices as a, our employees' consumer apps. So when uh, the, the level or the standard of user centricity um, of uh, modern uh, design and sort of being centered around the goals, my goals as an employee of what I'm trying to do in my day-to-day -day job um, is becoming uh, uh, really, you know, it's very similar to a consumer behavior at our clients, customers. Um, the, 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 as uh, our speaker talked about, the, there's a strong correlation between employee engagement um, and our ability to serve customer needs. So if we don't give our um, employees the, the right tools and tools that sort of address things from how they see the world, uh, whether that's a better uh, intranet or a better uh, internal application for managing customer needs or what have you, we're going to have troubles uh, with retention, particularly um, in younger demographics. Thanks, Kevin. Monica, I saw you unmute yourself, so why don't you go ahead and hit it? Yeah. Sure. I mean, Kevin brings up such a good point about having the tools and, you know, th those changing expectations that employees are having. And another thing um, that I think is really important to talk about, too, is just the connection to the the organization's purpose as well. It's really hard to be motivated to use new tools if you are feeling a disconnect between what you do and what the organization is promising externally. So this is something at a more meta level, but something that we find sounds surprising, but it isn't. If you ask your employees how, you know, what is our organization's purpose? Not what you do, not what you make, not how you do it, but what is our purpose? Um, and see what they say. Do they know it? Do they feel connected to it? Do they think it's not authentic or that it's aspirational, it's not really who you are. I mean, imagine um, imagine what that means externally and on, on that customer experience you're delivering if your own employees aren't feeling connected to what you're promising on the outside. That's something that we, um, that we have to work on as an, across an organization. It doesn't, the solution doesn't live with just one department. You might start with HR, might start with marketing, but it really takes that whole organization to build that framework and bring employees into it 
to feel more connected to what we're promising. Mo Monica, yeah. just a private chat question. Uh, maybe this is directed for you. Uh, who leads that effort? Great question. So ideally, your management team hopefully would be aware of the disconnects. But again, it totally depends on your management team. Um, the C-suite you would hope would would be on top of those things and have the right inputs to notice it. However, we know it's not an ideal world, um, but change can start within a department too. I mean, focus on what your team can do then. Do your employees feel connected to the purpose? Do they know what it is? Do they have the tools and the materials to actually live and breathe that every day? Are they being measured on the right KPIs? Um, you can start with little steps on your own team if that, if that priority at the management level isn't there. Sometimes too, if you are making an, an effort within your own team and you start involving other departments, it's a great way to raise the profile of that issue internally and kind of manage it up um, if it's not coming top down. A follow along, same question, uh, same line of question. Do you think adding financial incentive helps or do not help? Well, that's a good question. Um, I'm, I'm sure it could help, uh, but people have different motivators. Um, some people, you know, that, that matters a lot. Other people, it's flexibility. Other people, it's just being heard and seen. Um, and so much of that comes down to, again, it sounds like that only lives in HR, but it doesn't. So much of culture building comes down to that relationship that managers have with every employee too. And that's in accounting, that's in supply, that's in logistics. Um, it's really, it's a cohesive effort and knowing what employees actually value personally, I think, um, helps you set the right, uh, motivators for them. Sometimes it's financial. It could be, it could be other things too. I would add on to that. Uh, so one of, uh, the, uh, the, the motivators uh, for employees or anybody really is trying to do the, do the right thing. We had, um, uh, a client of ours that went through a, a, a sort of a, uh, a program to sort of radically make over their customer experience to really raise their game. They, they brought in a chief experience officer and linked their external brand and an internal brand in a really interesting way all around um, the, the value of customer service and the fact they were a local company, uh, local utility. And the uh, part of that was uh, because this utility had thousands of employees that lived in and among the customers and were customers themselves, gave them a um, digital platform to be able to uh, identify issues when they were talking to their, their neighbors around, you know, there's a problem with, with my service, I haven't been able to get it resolved. To actually give every employee in the company the ability to kind of escalate on behalf of a customer a problem and get help to get a resolution. To me, that was probably the most... Uh, customer centric example of a specific digital solution to say, we're going to solve our customer satisfaction problem um, using this, the power of employees. And I think we did, there wasn't uh, necessarily a payment to an employee associated with that. The payoff was, you know, I get to solve this problem for my neighbor um, who's been having trouble. So, so Kevin, Kevin, that same line of thought. So creating a survey monkey questionnaire, but tracking every single response to who says what, that's not a good way. No, that's not necessarily a good way. Yeah, we it's uh, we, it, we often say like it's it's when we talk about employee enablement, it's important to move the decisions from the furthest away from the customer to the closest to the customer, so that those folks have the authority to resolve that customer's needs quickly and effectively and completely, uh, so that there's less time being wasted between escalations, and you move the decisions to where the information is, as opposed to the information to where the decisions are. Uh, Adele, I'll hand it over to you for a last comment on this one before we move on to the next one. Right, so I don't, <laughs> you guys were talking a lot about um, some of the expectations of employees changing in terms of the tools that they're using. And one of the things uh, that I'm seeing a lot of is uh, people wanting to do what's right and looking at that from a more systemic level. And so what I've also been seeing is that we're seeing changes to business processes, to moving the decision makers uh, closer 
like maybe it's your, I keep talking about these database guys. I don't, maybe I deal with them a lot, but moving them closer to the customer. So people who are maybe not your frontline workers are able to better act and make customer centered decisions. That's great. It's actually a great segue into the next area. This is a free for all round. So all of you, um, all of you just feel free to jump in um, in terms of the panel. But what ex what kinds of uh, employee experience improvements are our leaders implementing? So we, we know employee experience is important. We know it relates to customer experience and has a very direct impact there. So what are people doing about this? What are the improvements um, that leaders are looking to implement to make sure that that employee experience is aligned with the customer experience and is seamless? I don't mind starting this time. <laughs> uh, so I've been uh, taking a look, um, preparing kind of for the event today and thinking about what are the types of projects that I've really seen come up. And uh, especially with the results of the last year and everything that's happened, it's really amplified our need for um, being able to reach across the screen essentially and, and engage with our workers. So collaboration improvements that we were starting to see have really taken off, especially uh, with an emphasis on remote and asynchronous work. Mm -hmm. um, so those are like intranets, maybe you're integrating various systems, uh, dashboards and mobile capabilities. Also eliminating spreadsheet spread is something I hear a lot. Um, and this leads us into this other thing is where people are sort of reaching the um, end of what they can do with their existing platforms and they start uh, upgrading. Maybe it's to mobile or another platform, but where the goal before was productivity, now it's becoming repositioning ourselves for growth and seeing exponential improvements and the ability to get better data integration across departments, better transparency and incorporate new features. And then as we're doing this, the other thing that I'm seeing, which is really, really quite cool is, you know, even five years ago, most of the projects I worked on, I worked uh, in collaboration with a business lead and the head of IT usually. And now we're starting to see HR and marketing as key stakeholders and employee facing initiatives. So they're really trying to bring that culture and the brand message home. Perfect. Monica, Kevin? Yeah, I would, I would take a swing at this one. So um, the, a lot of uh, employers are looking at the number of tools and um, products that they're asking uh, employees to use on a daily basis and kind of the collective you know, friction or time that it takes a, a user to, to either work within different systems or pivot. Um, the, the, there's a movement towards taking those tools that we used to think of as maybe just engagement or information sort of uh, tools like an intranet and building in more operational functions. So things that uh, will make an employee's life easier on the job, not just sort of provide them information about the company or, or you know, training on their first day and that sort of thing. So you have a bit of more of a unified experience. And then as well as layering in um, mobile. So especially for anybody who has employees that are working, that work in a mobile way, not work from home, but actually are in their car and, and, and visiting sites and doing things like that, is being able to um, let them complete, uh, you know, critical functions, you know, right up there on the spot or get information on the spot uh, in a really fast and efficient way and not have to like go back to the office or go to a coffee shop and work and things like that. Yeah, I no, totally agree. Monica, go ahead. Yeah. Sure, just a couple of thoughts on this. Um, we tend to work with a lot of um, food and healthcare companies. So obviously with the pandemic, these have become essential businesses. I think that's really changed the way a lot of leadership is looking, leadership and just department leadership to evaluate their strategies and what they're trying to do. So for example, um, when it comes to um, solutions that marketing is considering from a technology standpoint, it's how easy is this for my employees to use? They're already being asked to do so much more than used to be part of their daily job. I can't give them all these other things on top of it. It has to be easy. I know they have to be trained and ready to roll. Um, or can I automate some things without, by the way, detracting from that customer experience? Because just because you can doesn't mean you should. Mm -hmm. So I think just seeing how um, management is viewing those solutions differently and really trying to protect the amount of time people have if you are in an, in an essential business right now. 
Yeah. Tony, how are we doing on questions? Just before we move on, I want to make sure we're not missing the train there. Actually, you have one more question that I have not uh, reached out yet. Um, so this is probably go to all of you guys. Uh, there is a terminology called technology sprawl amongst employee experience side, where they're just over and inundated with technology and new tools. Uh, what do you, is there a good balance and how, how would you manage that? Hmm. Uh, that's a good question. Um, so, I mean, the, the sort of related to what I was answering before the, you know, the, as we layer on new tools, we saw this, um, you know, within the last year where people were, you know, required to learn Zoom or learn Teams or maybe more reliant on, you know, Office 365 without necessarily having um, the training or, you know, the supports um, that, that you need. So I think the technology sprawl may be also related to um, insufficient sort of thinking it through from an employee experience point of view is what, how do we expect someone, what are their goals in their job? You know, what, what kind of uh, environments do they work in? What kind of training or education they come from or backgrounds where, you know, we're asking people to, you know, for example, who aren't necessarily native, you know, native PC users have, you know, had to level up pretty quickly to be able to operate, you know, teams and things like that uh, in jobs that didn't require it before. I'm thinking there's lots of teachers in my family. So they, <laughs> they all had, they go through the same, the same sort of thing all, all of a sudden. So um, yeah, I think back to thinking, thinking it again from an employee's perspective, not like the old me that said, you know, we can force employees to do whatever we tell them to in applications, but but what, what should we be asking them to do? We have time for one more comment from Adele or Monica. One of you want to pipe oh. in on that one. Can I, I don't mind elbowing my way to the front here, Monica. <laughs> Go ahead, Adele. Um, I feel like this is a bit of my sweet spot. spot. Um, so one of the trends I've been seeing over the over my career is a bit of as things get exciting, you know, we start trying all these new things and we add all these products and uh, features to our to our workflow, even to our, our own stuff at home. And it starts to get big and we end up with a lot of specialty products. And then we end up going through a phase of bringing them together and unifying things before it sprawls out again. And I think for many of the companies, um, they're in a let's unify. So we're seeing a lot of trends towards platforms, automation and integration, and a lot more cloud-based tools that allow you to you know, take something from this app and combine it with the data you need from this app. So it doesn't feel like so much sprawl. And uh, I just, maybe I'm solutioning, but <laughs> but it, it happens a lot and it's a trend. I think once you get it working and you're all together, you'll be like, oh, well, let's, let's branch out again and we'll end up in that cycle once more. <laughs> Hey, I don't mind solutioning because that's kind of what we do for clients, right? We get them those results. So it's all good. It's natural for you to be thinking that way. Uh, when we talk about, when we talk about, again, you know, employees and how they shape customer experience, um, Monica, like what are, what are some of the ways that employees shape customer experience um, and, and, and what does that look like? Sure. So going back to the brand advocacy, I think one of the biggest opportunities for any business is to is to make sure that you have you have taken care of your brand and that it's easy to understand internally. Um, you'd be surprised how willing employees um, are to to take up the flag and um, go get more involved. Often they just don't feel prepared. So when we work with clients, we really try to simplify what their why is, what that looks like, the brand tone, the, um, the archetype that helps bring it to life in a storytelling way and making sure that people have really simple materials or calls to action so they understand how to get involved. I think that's such a, um, it sounds really simple, but you'd be surprised how uh, many organizations just don't have that mentality internally because again, they've, they've been focusing on their customer um, but forgetting how much influence an employee has, even if it's an indirect connection to a customer, even if it's someone in accounting, um, someone in the warehouse, you just never know who they're going to run across in their day-to-day -day lives where they could have an impact. Great. Thanks, Monica. Kevin or Adele? Adele, I see you unmuted already. <laughs> I just thought I'd leave it there in case someone's <laughs> <in>. um, <laughs> So 
you know, I talk a lot about these people who are further back from the process and um, the way I see it, all rivers flow to the ocean and all business processes flow to your customer. So the most impactful way each employee can shape customer experience is by fully engaging in their role. And it's our job to make sure that they can do that um, by understanding the ways that what they do on the daily impacts that final product or service and their ability to collaborate effectively with their teammates. So by contributing effectively, their contributions actually start to cascade both upwards and downwards. Um, so it enables like smoother flow of work all the way to that customer. That's my, <laughs> that's my take on that one. <laughs> Kevin, I can't see your little bubble, but I heard you make a sound. So go ahead. I'm here. Okay. Um, so I, I think so. I'm the digital experience guy, right? So, um, you know, one of the things I learned early on in, in customer experience through organizations like the uh, CXPA was, you know, every organization has a customer experience, but not everyone has an intentionally designed one. And so our employees are shaping customer experiences good or bad all the time. So first of all, you always want to make sure that you're intentionally designing and that you're involving your frontline folks in that um, uh, in that process through design thinking exercises and bringing really that knowledge with your best, uh, your best uh, employees and how they treat and serve customers, bring that knowledge into the sort of the, the, the game plan for all tr employees to be tr trained on. And then, you know, just to hit that other point I made before, you know, they're in a digital world where you're, you're kind of your, say your online or your mobile or your Amazon Alexa device or whatever's doing some of the lifting on customer experience. When those things don't, don't work out, employees are really the, the line of defense. And so having them have the tools, being empowered uh, to make the right decisions to be able to solve customers in those cases where our digital avatars, you know, fall down, I think uh, that's a, you know, make, make that moment of truth into like a signature experience. I wrote that down from um, Diane, but making that to be a story when you, when the customer is telling the story of your, your company, you know, that whether it has a really happy ending and they're amazed and everybody's impressed or like, I'm never going there again, might be the actions of one employee. So. Yeah. So, so just, just before we conclude, just to summarize a few important things that I heard, um, one of them was what you want, mentioned, Monica, which was purpose, making sure that you have a defined purpose. And part of that purpose, I think, aligns with what Adele mentioned around, you know, that all streams kind of flow to the ocean, right? Like all business processes should be flowing towards your purpose and satisfying that purpose. And then to your point, Kevin, like making sure that all the enabling technologies, like those, those river stones that are underneath those rivers, that those are all aligned to enable the business to execute towards the purpose of the organization and making sure that that experience is strong, consistent, and integrated um, with the customer experience so that employees are feeling like we're, we're walking what we're talking. And so that's what I would uh, summarize some of the key highlights that I heard. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just thank you guys very much for, for taking the time to do this. Um, if, again, there's any questions, because our time is up for this portion, um, Tony's going to mention the Ask the Expert in a moment. Feel free to submit your questions through there. Um, we're very prompt in responding, and we would love to add more context or information or clarity whenever possible. So, Tony, I'll hand it back to you now, sir. And uh, thank you very much for everyone for joining us today. Yeah, actually, do you mind? I'll go to the next slide. Sure. Hey, so uh, we're going to do a quick Q&A. Uh, we do have a couple questions. Now, um, on the side note, if your chat box is blinking, uh, Jessica Stein, the event manager, is trying to get your contact information so we can send you a Uber Eats e-card. I'm sure you want that, right? So uh, <laughs> one question that came on, um, how, how are ex employee experience and customer experience, are they the same or different? Like a lot, any one of you guys. Uh, sure. I'll throw my hat in the ring here. Um, and so Diane talked a little bit about this, how we're part of an ecosystem. Um, and there's some, so there's some approaches we can take that are very the same. We're, we're both users, your employees are users, your customers are users. And so we can use very similar techniques to learn from them and build software that works and even test that software. And, but that's where it gets really cool that you have, you know, the software that are initiative that you're building for your employees, because you have an eager and available user base to learn from and build software that's more exacting to their needs. And another uh, key difference that is just maybe a bit of a mind shift for people 
is that you are not your customers, but your business is literally your employees. This is how your business is empowered. So you're going to start to see direct and measurable benefits from every improvement that you make to your employee experience. And I think even Diane mentioned like from hiring, engagement, productivity, growth, culture, investing in their experience is a little bit like business self-care. So yeah, I would add one thing that Adele, you, you said you're, you're not your customer. And we talk about that a lot when we're designing digital customer experiences about doing the research and, mm -hmm. and making sure we understand those personas. I think there might be a bias against uh, thinking that you need to do that in an internal side because we have you know one or two people that participate in a project and who can represent the, the users. But you know, I think there's a place for, for research even there, just to, especially if you have a larger company, to know that there is, you know, uh, to understand better about who, who your users are. And right. And you're really looking at what are the things people need to make good decisions in order to do their job. It's not about understanding what their job description is. Yeah. It's, it's really understanding, you know, the thought processes. Uh, one more question. I think this may be for Monica and uh, Diane. Uh, where do I begin to start improving employee experience as it relates to customer experience? What, what, would, you, what would be your first step, uh, Monica or Diane? Monica? Um, um, sure, first? I'm happy to go. And then if uh, Diane wants to chime in, I know she has such great recommendations in that framework she presented. Um, I really think it's important to understand how well all of your um, employees understand your brand purpose. I think that is crucial because if you don't understand it at the top, um, guess what's happening at the tactical level. So exploring that positioning, making sure that that's accurate for your company. You know, there's a few ways that we feel we recommend thinking about your brand purpose. And one is making sure it's a why. You have all day to talk about what and how, but why unlocks that emotional selling. Um, and your what's and your how's might change over time. So that's crucial. Um, does it differentiate your organization in the marketplace or are you just adding to the noise? Is it the essence of your organization? And employees are great at gut checking that one because mm -hmm. they'll say, mm, I don't know about that. Um, I think we want to be that, but we aren't. Um, is it scalable? So once again, as you grow, as you expand footprint, et cetera, you don't want to outgrow your purpose. Um, sometimes that happens, but it shouldn't be something that's changing every year. It's not like a limited time offer. It's, it's your brand DNA. And then the last thing is, does it actually resonate with all of your audiences? So we've been talking a lot today about your customer experience and your employee experience, but there are other audiences that almost every business has. You have vendors and collaborators, you have the communities um, in which you work. Depending on your type of organization, you have the trades. There's a lot of those other unseen audiences that can be similar to employees that really add up to how well you can deliver on your everyday business. Okay, thank you. So Diane, okay. what would you- I'll first? expand, yeah. I'll expand on, on Monica's, I'll say, you know, you have to define the why, but when I kind of, where, where do you start? Um, I always say, well, what's the why question? Um, so oftentimes going to your executives or employees, just like you would your customers and asking, well, what are the business questions we're trying to answer? Um, why do customers leave? Uh, why do employees leave? Because that will begin to tell you what's top of mind for everyone. And starting with that can then help you go investigate and say, we don't really know why people leave. If we, we just fill the funnel up top. Um, so those are some ways that you can start to prioritize because I know, I know <laughs> that all the things we talk about like seem very overwhelming because that seems like, oh my gosh, it's everything. Um, just start with the things that are most critical. You probably have heard and know where some of the, the pain points are for employees, but get a group together and just start asking, you know, what are those things that are standing in their way from different groups? So you do that with employee, with customers. So it's really the same approach. Um, and then look at the junction because oftentimes you'll find it's a mirror image of what the employees are saying is a problem. Customers also will tell you, or if they're not, there's a problem in and of itself. So, so ask the why question um, to kind of get to that. So we can't always use, it's my boss's, boss's the issue? No. Preferably not. <laughs> Being a boss. <laughs> All right. Hey, uh, Chris, if you want to go to the next slide and we'll do a wrap up here. All right. So real quick, thank you all for joining. Let's do a quick 15 seconds. We'll start with Diane 
Kevin, Adele, Monica, and then Chris, you close. Go ahead, Diane, 15 seconds. Uh, I would say don't get overwhelmed, even though I talked about all of these things. Uh, start small, take a step at a time, um, demonstrate the value of how those changes are impacting the organization and talk to your executives about it, get their buy-in. Kevin? Sure, I, I, I would say, I, I love the term return on experience. I think there's an opportunity to do that even when your digital experience is focused on an employee, you're thinking in that, that line and, and thanking everybody for coming today. And I look forward to seeing people in person in the next one of these. Adele? Hi, yeah. So I think to support Diane's point and uh, starting to talk to your individuals, really whatever you're doing that can help people on an individual level, and then you can start scaling up from there. Thanks Monica? for coming. <laughs> Uh, sure. Just a, a final point to add on top of what Adele and Diane said too is um, by better engaging your what you can control, make it a habit too. Uh, oftentimes we do these great cross-functional collaborations for a particular project and it just ends when the project's over. The more you have those um, healthy habits, you get those great feedback loops that help you become um, a lot, a lot more um, proactive and being able to anticipate instead of discovering and reacting. Thank you, Chris. Uh, I'll just be really quick and short. When you know your employees, you know your customers. They're the front lines, they're experts in your customers' needs, how they're resolved. Investing in your employees and creating those connections and alignment is connecting with your customers, I think, uh, and, and a really important thing. Like, awesome. Great job, Chris, for moderating uh, today's session. All for, for all of you guys, uh, today's session was recorded, so we're gonna edit that down to the content piece. A lot that you guys can't really share uh, today's session, doing today's session because it's a public forum. Uh, that's why there is that link that we put on the side chat over there about Ask the Expert. And uh, yeah, please sign up and have a one-on-one -on -one chat. I, I'm sure Chris, Monica, Adele, Kevin, uh, even Diane will be able to kind of spend a little more time with you guys. So have a great rest of this week um, and then enjoy the cold weather. I'm joking. <laughs> enjoy the cold weather. Uh, and then have a great weekend. See you guys later. Thank Bye, you. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.